morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Thursday, March 7, 2013. A couple of quick items before we start. An Italian court has sentenced former Prime Minister of Italy, Silvio Berlusconi, to one year in jail for his involvement apparently with a wiretapping incident. Mr. Berlusconi will appeal the case. Of course, he came in uh, second in the uh, most recent Italian election. Also, uh, the number of Americans filing for unemployment benefits de uh, declined to a six-week low in the United States and figures released by the government this morning. It seems now that the four-week average uh, has dropped to a five-year low. Meanwhile, the uh, stock market in New York is at an all-time high. So things are apparently beginning to turn. Apparently, according to an economist at uh, Union Bank of Switzerland Securities in Connecticut, every indication we have is that the labor market in the United States is beginning to pick up steam. It's all consistent with 2013 being an okay year, despite all the fears about what sequestration might mean or what Europe might do. News from Hanover, Germany, Hanover Re has delivered record results with net profits climbing 40% in 2012. Despite losses from Hurricane Sandy and the Costa Concordia and the U.S. drought, Ulrich Wallen and his team have delivered a 15% return on equity. The German reinsurer reported a net income of about $1.16 billion this year, compared to about $720 million last year. Uh, they did have some substantial hits. They took a 256 million euro loss from Sandy, a 53 million euro loss from the Costa Concordia, and a 43 million euro loss from the U.S. drought. Uh, Wallen said that uh, in uh, 2012, we were able to push through price increases for most business segments. As a result, the rate level for our company in 2012 was significantly better than in 2011. John Hastings Bass, who was the chairman of Lloyd's insurer Nove, made an interesting comment. He warned that the early adoption of the Solvency II regime by the Lloyd's community, quote, looks increasingly fraught with cost dangers. S2, of course, is Europe's proposed regulatory scheme that looks to codify and harmonize the amount of capital that insurance companies must hold to reduce the risk of insolvency. Lloyd's and Tom Bolton and his team got out way ahead of this and introduced uh, similar type uh, measures within the Lloyd's community that companies had to adhere to. Hastings Bass said that there were many good features introduced by S2, but that the real threat was that Solvency II that is eventually going to be approved by Brussels would be so different from what was envisaged when it was first proposed that all of the Lloyd's players will, quote, have to tear it up and start again. He concluded by saying, quote, let us hope that our British desire to embrace all that is European, and in this case, all that possibly one day may be European, is not another example of zeal outweighing benefit. Mr. Hastings Bass should remember that those uh, measures taken by the Lloyds administration, in fact, have greatly improved the financial wherewithal of the Lloyds community, which will uh, help it market throughout the world. Penn State University is alleging in a new lawsuit that its insurance carrier has not been honoring its obligation to cover claims related to sexual misconduct by its former coach Jerry Sandusky. The university filed a complaint in state court yesterday uh, saying that uh, it had been sued by 29 claimants, but that the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association Insurance Company has not provided any coverage. It said that the school has been a customer of the Blue Belt, Pennsylvania-based insurance company for more than 50 years. The lawsuit wording said that despite the substantial insurance premiums that Penn State paid uh, PMA over the course of those years, uh, when various individual claimants began to raise claims and file lawsuits, PMA failed to provide the coverage for which Penn State had bargained and paid. Pennsylvania manufacturer spokesman issued no comment. The 69-year-old Sandusky is serving a 60-year prison term for the sexual abuse of 10 boys. Well, the rock singer Lady Gaga is in the news. Her management company and tour promoters are suing three syndicates at Lloyd's of London over a 2012 concert in Indonesia that was called off after threats from Muslim extremists. The insurers are accused of refusing to honor two terrorism policies, which would have protected the promoters from cancellation laws. 
Gaga had been scheduled to play in Jakarta on June 3, 2012, and had sold more than 50,000 tickets. In the weeks before her arrival, religious hardliners began to protest against the, quote, vulgar singer. Quote, she wears only panties and a bra when she sings, and she stated she is the envoy of the devil's child. Since authorities were unable to guarantee her safety, she canceled the tour in Indonesia. The, the lawsuit's been filed in California, the base of operation for the three American uh, uh, Lloyd syndicates that insured the tour. Um, according to the policy, Gaga was protected from losses should any insured performance or events uh, be necessarily canceled, abandoned, rescheduled, interrupted, or relocated uh, as the sole and direct result of terrorism. In some ways, this dispute may not be only about the Jakarta tour. As we mentioned two weeks ago, uh, Gaga just canceled the remainder of her North American tour, 21 concerts with estimated lost revenues of about $25 million uh, because she is recovering from hip surgery. A uh, 5.6 magnitude earthquake in Taiwan uh, shook buildings in downtown Taipei this morning. Uh, no reports of any damage or injuries. Whereas Dennis Rodman, now that you need him, the North Koreans are uh, vowing to launch a preemptive nuclear strike against the United States. Uh, this is hours ahead of a vote by United Nations diplomats on whether to level new sanctions against North Korea for its recent nuclear test. Uh, the North Koreans should be aware that uh, the United States military has the exact longitude and latitude of the residences of all of the top political and military leaders of North Korea. Authorities in California are trying to determine what provoked a lion at an exotic animal park uh, by Fresno to attack and maul to death a 24-year-old woman who had been on the job there as an intern for just a few weeks. The woman was attacked uh, and killed yesterday when she entered the male African lion's enclosure at a place called Cat Haven, just east of Fresno. Apparently, um, another park worker could not lure the lion into another pen so sheriff's deputy shot and killed the uh, lion to try to reach the wounded woman, but she died later at the scene. Her father said that uh, she was fascinated by lions from an early age and was absolutely fearless. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.